We've done a lot of derivation and calculation up to now. Uh, let's turn back to doing some optical design because that's what the class is about. Let's show the simplest example of how this concept of rays can be used to understand an optical system. One of the first optical systems that did imaging, uh, that we were aware of anyway, uh, was the pinhole camera. Uh, and uh, as I note here, it was invented in China in the 5th century BC, and invented by Aristotle in 300 BC, and invented by that same guy I mentioned earlier, who worked out some of the fundamental laws of geometrical optics in 1000 AD, and in fact invented uh, in 1600, uh, and invented again by Kepler in 1604. Apparently this is a relatively easy thing to invent. Um, Aristotle, as a matter of fact, noticed uh, that, uh, and you can see this, that if you have the leaves of a tree, they will tend to intersect and make little pinholes just randomly, and that makes an image of the sun. Uh, so if you ever see this you'll s and look for it, you'll see yellow disks. Uh, those are literal images of the sun, and they're round. And of course Aristotle uh, noticed this uh, during an eclipse when it was pretty obvious that wait, uh, I'm seeing uh, lots and lots of copies of the sun on the ground there. It's kind of, kind of cool. Uh, good observational powers. Well, how the heck does it work? Uh, well, this kind of shows us the idea. Now that we understand we can use rays uh, to, to trace and, and understand an optical system, we could imagine uh, this is an object, and we'll, we're going to use this symbol for objects a lot, uh, but if you like this little arrow, it could be a tree. Um, and we could sh imagine that there's some little thermal radiator, some little molecule there that's every once in a while sending some photons out. It's going to do that, according to Maxwell's equations, in, in a set of spherical waves. So we could trace a whole set of rays that all started at the tip of this arrow, and they'd go off in every possible direction, and most of them would just light up the room. But some of them would all go through this hole. So we'd have a cone of rays representing a small portion of this spherical wave, and that cone of rays would continue uh, on to the back uh, of, this, of this box, let's say. Now you notice that if I had a different little radiator down at the bottom of the arrow, or the root of the tree, uh, and it radiated its own spherical wave, that spherical wave would end up at a different spot back here. And as long as this hole was small enough, as I've illustrated it here, it's, it's probably too big, this case over here with the tree is a little bit closer, if the hole is small enough, I would separate out the rays that emerged from the bottom of the arrow, the roots of the tree, from those that came from the top, and I'd get an image. And it actually works pretty well. That's a fairly typical image of a uh, through a pinhole camera. Um, and notice a couple things about this. Uh, first of all, it's been turned right side up because this is an inverting camera. Uh, the image is upside down, and you can see that because you own rays now just from the ray trace. Notice it also works fine over a range of colors. This is a color photo, and there wouldn't be very much effect of color. Red and blue and green would all end pretty much at the same spot. Um, you do notice some darkening around the edges. Uh, we're going to see that as one of our classic problems with imaging systems, um, and so we'll learn more about that later. To give you an idea of the kinds of calculations we're going to do, and this is one of the fundamental questions we said geometrical optics could answer for us, we could ask how big is this image maybe relative to the object, because it looks like a linear system, so there should be a fixed ratio there. Well, we can just define that the magnification is this height over that height, and we'll do that with, with a sign, S-I-G-N, uh, so we'll call this a negative height and this a positive height, because we like to know when images are inverted. If you design a system that shows someone an upside-down image, that's going to be considered bad. Uh, so we'll define uh, the magnification as this height over that height, and in this case it would be a negative number, and we're going to define a sign convention that this distance to the left, uh, to behind the camera, is a negative distance, and this is a positive distance, and just from tracing one of these rays uh, right through here, any one of them, uh, we see that the magnification, therefore, must be the image distance relative to where the pinhole is over the object distance, L. That's the kind of geometrical calculations we can do with these rays to answer these fundamental questions about imaging systems.